So I start off by cutting down my sheets of plywood with a circular saw, uh, slightly bigger than what I need them. That way I can take it over to the table saw and cut them to the right size with a straight edge on each side. Also, I want to mention that I'm going to be dividing these up into three sections, three main sections. So I'm going to start with the right of the built-in, uh, kind of get this together, figure it out, and then go back and do the left and the bench after I know what the heck I'm going to be doing. Since the two sides of the boxes are going to be the exact same, because, you know, the box, just decided to put them all or stack them on top of each other and just cut uh, both at the same time. That way they are exactly the same and I don't have to measure twice. Once I had all my pieces cut, next thing was to just screw in the sides. Um, I did it without glue first just to mock it up and then once I like how it was fitting. I added the glue and then put the screws back in. Alright, so once my rectangle piece was glued, screwed, and dried, I went ahead and I added my shelves. Um, they are spaced out 16 and a quarter inches. Um, and then the very bottom one is spaced out 2 feet and 3 quarters of an inch. Alright, so now that everything is glued, screwed, and ready to go, um, the next part was to try to take this off my workbench and try not to kill myself in the process Because this thing is kind of heavy now All right, and as you can see it was a little uh, Wonky I guess you could call it um, This thing almost fell on me, but you know it, it didn't fall so we're good and This thing's huge all right, so as you can see, this thing is massive. It's like seven and a half feet tall. Uh, it's from floor to ceiling. Uh, the ceilings are eight feet tall. Um, and this thing is freaking heavy. It's like two sheets of plywood. So I don't know, like 150, 180 pounds. Um, and it's still not done. This is just the, the, I guess the skeleton. I don't know what you call it, the carcass. Um, I have a, two by four up there because that's gonna be in the bottom for like the toe kick and stuff so that's actually the height of it which is I don't know it's it's tall um, but I went ahead and I did one first this is gonna be the right if you're looking at it from the front it's gonna be the right side uh, the yellow one I'll show I'll show like a picture of uh, how I have them so it's gonna be the yellow one on the right side luckily the one on the left and the bottom ones are a little bit smaller so I started with the biggest one and now I just got to do the other ones and I'm going to need help taking this over to the house and I don't even know how I'm going to do that but I'll figure that later. I got to build it first. Okay, now that I have the first one built, the other two is just a rinse and repeat. So I'm just going to go ahead and time last of that real quick and we'll move on. So I decided to use spackle to cover up my holes where I screwed in these shelves from the side. Um, I've done this before in other projects and I never had any problems with it. So that's what I did. All right, so I have my three pieces uh, assembled. We got the right, yeah, the right shelf, the left shelf, and the bench down here. I have some pop, I have some poplar ready to be cut up in strips of one and a half inches for the face frames. And then I gotta make the doors and then prime and paint. And I'm almost done. I just use wood glue and brad nails to attach the one and a half inch uh, pieces of poplar for the face frame onto the carcass. Mm -hmm. 
For the bench, I just used the one and a half pieces of poplar, glued them, brad nailed them in, and then for the center um, decorative pieces, I just found the center of the bench and then spaced out the other two appropriately. Next up is going to be the two doors that are going to go one on each side of this built-in. Um, I made these styles and rails of the doors three inches thick and I used MDF for the center panel. Uh, I gave these a quick dry fit to make sure everything was working or lining up properly and then I added glue and put them together. Alright, so after the doors were done, I gave this a quick sand, making sure to get all the edges and corners, and then get the garage ready for paint. So I only showed me doing one coat of paint on here, but I actually went back and did a second coat of paint to all the panels. After giving the paint a full day to dry, um, we loaded these up on the truck and it was time to go and deliver these. They have to make two trips because I was not able to fit all three pieces on the back of my truck in one go. But luckily they didn't live too far so that wasn't a big of a deal. So when it comes to the installation it's pretty straightforward. Um, I started off by removing the baseboard where the built-in is going to go. I placed my 2x4 toe kicks on the floor and then placed the built-ins on top of the 2x4 toe kicks. Um, I actually forgot to measure out where the studs are going to be on the wall so I had to pull them back down, uh, locate the studs and then put them back on so I could put the screws in. Once everything is attached to the wall and it's not going to go anywhere, I went ahead and added the trim to the bottom so you don't see the ugly 2x4 toe kicks and the trim to the sides and the top so it will be flush with the roof and there won't be any gaps on each side. And with that, this project is done. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure you drop a like down there in the like and dislike section, you know. Comment, that would be nice, you know. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.